at 37 Disney Street, which isn't far from you, three Disney fans have watched a film which they will now review. Hello friends and welcome to 37 Disney Street. The kids are off trying to rescue the world protected by their pet dog, which I altered. So we're taking a look at classic number 48, 2008, Bolt. I'm absolutely redonkulous. I'm Chris Fletcher. This meat lover's pizza isn't loving me back. I'm Lucy Rain. I eat danger for breakfast. Hello friends, I'm Hugh Rain. trying to slap your hand then I realised you said we could there. share this popcorn Chris oh, Chris just uh, have some just have it I was I, I, had the, I had the giggles because just before we hit record you said right I'm recording now and then you said so shut it <laughs> and that was the last thing you said to us before we started the show that's why my hand was wrong because I got the giggles you said so don't well just don't say anything and the minute someone says that you start having this need to talk and speak yeah sorry so about that so shut it I mean I'm not that sorry about it but yeah sorry about that how are we both I mean, we're I know because we've just spoken, haven't we, on a different show? But you know, yeah. we're good. Up, ups and downs. Yeah, it's been but... my first week back teaching in real life. Oh. I have been, and I, know, I like to say I'm shouting at kids. I'm not shouting at them. I'm, I'm encouraging them loudly. But as a result, um, my vocal cords are a little on the gruff side oh, today. Well, mm. that's no good, is it? Well, just in case anyone was wondering if I'd taken up smoking again or something. No, it's <laughs> it's just teaching, just teaching. Well, uh, we're going to talk about Bolt today. Bolt. We're coming out of that dark period. Yeah. Clambering out and uh, clawing our way towards the 50th. Yeah. One foot still in, stuck in the mire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like this film. Oh, now that's an early entry from Hugh Rain. You don't usually nail your flags to the mast. Actually, I do <laughs> quite often. Quite <laughs> yeah, often, I go, mm, I'm, I'm going to show my hand here. <laughs> I didn't like this. Um, yeah, I like it. I okay. I think it's all right. I have matters I wish to discuss. Do you know why? <laughs> uh, one of the, the, the one of the things I like about it is um, it's because. Um, Bonnie was really into this when she was like mm. nearly two, or maybe she was two actually. And it was a weird period where we were moving house and I was never sh quite sure if it was going to go through, but I was desperate to leave that old house and move here to 37 Disney Street. Um, uh, and Bonnie went through a period of being really into this and she used to watch it in a, in a collapsible box in front of the TV. Aww. And I put a picture on Twitter today and you can find it. Uh, I didn't have enough characters to put a hashtag, but if you search for 37 Disney Street, there's three separate words um and then the word box you'll find a picture of bonnie watching it um and it's during the um barking at the moon song Aww. um but then and then she got ill one night she got she was really like she's breathing a bit, bit funny she was fine in the end but we had to take her to the hospital and while we were there it was in the same period of time that was on the tv in the <laughs> little waiting room and we were like oh look it's it's bald and she was loving that and then she threw up on me well she, yeah was that um, a Dewsbury hospital yeah. yeah, we had a similar yeah. thing with Lucas where we went to Dewsbury Hospital and the Little Mermaid was on, and we wa mm. we watched it three times in the time. Oh, yeah. I, th I think we got I think we <laughs> I think we got through it once. I think uh, we we started at one point and it finished, and then we got up to the, the, the point where we entered and it was time to be seen. It was it was but, in the middle of the night, so there wasn't many yeah, other people there. Yeah, yes. But the sad thing is, is she has no memory of this film now. I tried to put it on a few months ago and she was like, mm, I don't want to watch this. And I, was, I thought, oh, but you used to love it. And I, I like it because she used to love it. Mm. So that's, it's sentimental to me. Uh, so I, I do like it. I just have fond memories of this summer watching it with her. And now it's brand new to her because she's six. And it means nothing to her. <laughs> I know this isn't usually my job, but I'm going to say, is that a good segue in to see what, what the kids thought of it then? Why not? But it's a bit <laughs> early, but yeah, well, let's do it. Oh, is it? No, oh, it's yeah, fine. We normally, well, we normally we, do well, it. Um, we're going to hand it over to you then. History. Lucy, and then, then we find out about the story. Oh, tell them later. I'm sorry, guys. I just thought, oh, oh he's talking about Bonnie and how she <laughs> Messing with the programme. I oh, know I am. I should... <laughs> Literally. I need show notes, right? So Bolt was released. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, right? But I, <laughs> I put a lot of effort into this this music. 
Um, and I'm going to play it, Lucy. <laughs> so... I'm so badly behaved. Go on. <laughs> Here you go. It's time to dig a little deeper to learn some Disney stuff. Dig a little deeper. No, we ain't dug this far enough. Dig down deep into the facts. We'll find out what we need. Lucy will school us, guaranteed. Open up the windows. Light in the light. Children. Right, get on with it, Lucy, because you're holding us up now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was released in 2008. It was directed by Chris Williams and Byron Howard. Chris Williams goes on to direct, co-direct, Big Hero 6 and Moana. And I recognise the name Byron. Byron Howard goes on to co-direct. Tangled. Yes, good. Yeah. Tangled and Zootopia. Two of my favourite recent Disney films. So, um, good stock. Good stock there. But they were not the initial directors. The initial director was... Someone else. Chris Sanders. He nearly didn't get written down then. <laughs> uh, the initial director was Chris Sanders, who co-directed Lilo and Stitch. He um, wrote the original script, and it was entitled American Dog. And in Catch Silver it. Hamster, it included a uh, large radioactive rabbit and a one-eyed cat got dumped in Nevada or something. Um, and John Lasseter, who had just taken over um, as creative director, saw an early rush, uh, the early rushes of he, the film. He does this a lot, doesn't he? He sees the early rushes and goes, no. Yeah. Well, I was, I'm going to make a comparison, actually. Do you remember when we went through the, the Eisner-Katzenberger transition? Oh, yes. Do you remember that? Yes. And yeah. um, the Fox and the Hound... It, and what it was before, there, there was a few in a row that had to be totally rewritten or rushed through or something like that before you get onto the one that were already in production when they arrived, before you get to the ones that they saw through entirely. Well, John Lasseter made a number of suggestions. Been I it. believe that Chris Sanders went back to his work and didn't listen to any and just carried on working. <laughs> I, like shot, his, I like his style. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's got gumption. <laughs> yeah. uh, and just just kept doing his thing. And shortly after, left the Disney company. Let's just leave it there, I believe. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. Mm. So he was removed from the project. That's how it's put. He was removed from the project. But it's fine because he immediately went and adapted uh, How to Train Your Dragon for DreamWorks, which, as we know, was a fairly awesome. successful film. I like it. Franchise. Franchise. Fair, fairly successful franchise. So he did all right. But John Lasseter um, found a couple of uh, Disney in-house talented fellas by the names of Chris Williams and Byron Howard. And he said, here you go. Do with this what you will. They took all of Lasseter's uh, suggestions because by this point, <laughs> you wouldn't dare not. Because <laughs> they wouldn't have a job otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They had no choice. They renamed it, and that is the film that we get today. But instead of the usual four years, um, at this point, they were told they wanted it finished in 18 months. And this is what I mean by the mirroring with Katzenberg. It's like anything that was already in production when he arrived, he either rewrote or rushed through and until they got to the stuff that they made. Mm. And what's really interesting is that this falls in a nearly identical point in history to that, in that we're just about to get the Disney revival. And at that point, you were just about to get the Disney Renaissance, weren't you? So you kind of have this really awkward transition point where the passion passion projects out there. Mm. Chicken Little okay. got a rewrite, didn't it? Um, Meet the Robinsons got a rewrite and a, a re-theme and all this stuff. And it's been the same. Anyway, so that's what happened there. It stars <clears throat> John Travolta as Bolt and Miley Cyrus as Penny. I'm going to put my two penneth in and say that that particular casting was a little short-sighted because in 2008, she was, uh, you know, a perfect uh, in-house Disney teeny bopper. About two years later, she was twerking on MTV, on the MTV Awards. 
with a with a rubber finger. I don't know if you remember that. Um, oh yes, I, I recall yeah. that slightly. We all remember that, Miley. You wish we didn't, but we do. So I, I just when they do when they take these really current talents, it's not always the best idea. It also had Susie Essman as Mittens. Who is Susie Essman, Huey? Susie from Kerber Enthusiasm. I don't know if you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. Now, the thing is, she says some mm. pretty uh, awful things on there. So, you know, same could be said about her. She's hardly like... She's you a know, potty mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of one uh, insult in particular in the, the restaurant opening scene where, where she calls... Um, what's Larry's <laughs> wife called? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, a car wash or something. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, but the thing is about that is she's um acting uh playing a character and if you could never cast anyone who'd played a blue role i mean demi ma would never have got cast in anything which is the amount of time she spends in her clothes um whereas miley cyrus was doing it in real life and at the time was a teenage idol you know to that that generation of kids anyway it also was james lipton's final role James Lipton is yeah. the dude off the actor's studio. Inside the actor's studio. Inside the actor's studio. Um, so he played the director <clears throat> in the in the TV booth. Mm -hmm. um, it was supposedly inspired by the work of Edward Hopper, the painter, and the cinematographer, uh, Vitmus Sigmund, who was a cinematographer on Deer Hunter and Black Dahlia and dozens and dozens of others. Now, I'm not familiar enough with his work to pass comment on that. But Edward Hopper, it's just Americana, isn't it? Yeah, I can I can, I can, sort of see mm. that. Uh, I think now it would be more style, stylized, maybe. But I, yeah, I can sort of see where that's yeah. coming from. Well, I suppose it's just the, the observation of... Uh, Mid American life, isn't it? I would never have worked it out just you know no. off my own back. But I read some of the TV scenes were were inspired by um, Michael Bay. Right. Yeah. Mm, yep. That figures. Mm. <laughs> now they used a new computer program called um, NPR, which stands for Non Photorealistic Rendering. Interesting concept. And now I've heard of it, I'm so glad it exists because it is the thing that gives the background the hand painted tactile Play Doh effect, uh, okay. where you don't want things to look realistic. And this was used heavily in Tangled. And you're like, yes, because they were doing forest themes and uh, scenes and so on and so forth. But at no point did it look like, um, like the Lion King. You no. know what I mean? The new the Lion, new Lion yeah, King. Yeah. So, yeah, so this it's the first time it's been used here. It was developed for here. And I was doing this research while I was watching the film, and I looked up and I went, you know what? Very good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Liked it. Hmm. Um, Bolt is an amalgam of many different breeds of dog, if you were wondering, but he's primarily an American white shepherd because of the shape of his skull and ears. Big Ed. Yeah, although that's... It, that's why he's an amalgam because proportionally that is not a so it's john travolta American. actually <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> true john powell did the music who is a composer uh not in house for disney but famous for doing scars for animated films he did things such as chicken run shrek and happy feet um and there were two original songs one by Miley Cyrus and John Travolta, I Thought I Lost You, and then... I thought I lost you. Barking at the Moon. That home belongs to you. <laughs> <laughs> by somebody else who I appear to have not written down. I apologise oh. to that person. Because <laughs> I really liked that song. I'm going to get to that in music. Jenny Lewis. Oh, thank you, Huey. Um, and that is all I have to say. <gasps> Could I tell you something? Yes. They uh, <laughs> they got a giant inflatable hamster ball to get into the mind of Rhino and use it as a oh. stress reliever. And they also adopted a hamster called Doink. <laughs> oh, man. Doink. And finally, the other thing that I've got. Um, in Russia, the film Bolt is called Volt because Bolt in Russia means male genitalia. <gasps> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
I love learning foreign then, swear actually, words. I did have one other thing as well, which was that I was kind of looking at the whole animation process thing because I keep thinking, do you know what? We Sometimes we might quite low for various different things, but we don't actually consider how much effort and work goes into what these people are doing for us to go, you know, I just don't like, it's just the wrong colour mm. red for me. Um, and uh, I found a thing that said that for every four seconds of filming this, it takes four to five months to develop. And there were over 110 terabytes of data on the screen at any second in the production. That's mm. that's a lot. That's pretty it's huge. Mind, it? It's mind-boggling. It really isn't is, it? isn't it? Good when you think that, like, from from single cell painted things that we've had in the past to, to ridiculous mm -hmm. data. It's do you know Hughes uh, did a degree in animation before um, becoming an illustrator, as you know, and one of his classmates, a uh, very very talented guy, um, worked on the Harry Potter films, yeah. and so. He, it got this really long job. Darren and, Rodriguez. There you go. We called him Dazrod. Dazrod. <laughs> nice. And I'm like, what did you do on these films, Dazrod? Oh, I did the claw trickling in the water of the hippogriff. Are you anyone who's familiar oh, will yeah. know the scene? I mean, yeah, but yeah, yeah. that was for Frame Star. That was it. Frame Star, the company. But I mean, that was it. That was that was his 18 months. Do you know what I mean? The claw went shh. Nuts, isn't it? Then the hippogriff went off. Oh, that was clever. Your hand appeared at the other side of me then. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> like Doctor Strange. <laughs> it actually quite um, hurts, does that? But yeah, it it, it takes it takes forever and it, it, you take it so for granted, don't you? The mm. skill, the artistry, the patience of these people. There you go. Yeah. Go on then, you go on. You were gonna say you were gonna tell us what we do now, weren't you? I could tell it was it was on the tip of your tongue. Uh, yeah. It's time to get going, guys. We're going to delve into the story, the animation, and the music, and even look at the cry factor. <gasps> How sentimental is it? Um, yeah, and we'll split it up into points, 10 each, scoring 90 altogether, and that leaves 10 for the kids. Uh, and the kids are going to sum up the story for us now and give us their scores. We've just finished watching Bolt. So it's about a dog who's a TV star and he thinks he has superpowers. He thinks it is a super dog, but that was just a TV show. And he gets lost. He ends up going to New York in a box by mistake. He has to go back across America to find um, his owner Penny. And he made some friends on the way. And he meets while he's lost a cat. At first, but thought it was a cat on the TV show, the baddie. One, one really silly hamster. And a uh, hamster called Rhino. Um, the hamster does bouncing like ninja moves. And as he goes, he realises that he doesn't have superpowers and they helped him out to five, find his owner, Penny. And at the end, he saves Penny. The end. My favourite bit is the start when Penny adopts Bolt. My favourite bit is at the start where Bolt is just a puppet and I like all the other puppies, I think, because I really like puppies. My favourite bit was the start. My favourite character is Rhino, the hamster. My favourite character is... The hamster, because he's really silly. My favourite character was Bolt. There's only one song, and it goes like, There's no home like the one you've got, because that home belongs to you. I would give it a taste, three out of five. I would give it a three out of five. I would give it a seven out of one. And I watched the show, and it's about Bolt, and it's about Rhino, like, saving Penny and Bolt. Bye! What was your favourite character? Me? Yeah. Penny, probably. Have you got any other favourite characters? 
What, you want me to listen to the favourite characters? Uh, Rhino. That's one of my favourite characters. Well, Bolton Rhino is my favourite characters. Alright, thanks, Ollie. Anything else you want to say? No. Okay. Good night then. Good night. And that was that. <laughs> okay. Should we delve into what, the story? Oh, go on. Do, go on. Do, you know, do you know you know what's good about that is they and what was easier for me to edit that was um, they all had the exact same opinions and <laughs> they, they didn't really uh, talk about anything other than the the, the same the same uh, story points. <laughs> so I could just go. It was a doddle. Lucas spoke for less than two minutes. I don't think he's ever done that before. He did because uh, I wanted to get this done um, before the show um, because I've got some scripts to write tonight, and I managed to do it. Sat on the toilet while Bonnie had a. I wasn't. I wasn't using the toilet. I was just sat on the clothes toilet while Bonnie had a bath. Do you Sorry. ever think we share too much on this show? Probably. Yeah. Story. So it's time oh, to discuss how the story goes. I know it can be worse than Oliver and Coke. Not this time. It can't. No. no, that we. I'm not sure we mentioned this last time, but um, the ident at the start of this is the brand new. Uh, yeah, I think it first appeared in Pirates of the Caribbean, but the first classic it was on was Meet the Robinsons, I think. So this is the second classic appearance of the Walt Disney fancy all singing all dancing castle ident. Do you I know think something? That's that, right. That jumped into my ones. mind immediately as well. Was was uh, a, a, a very similar to what you said already about um about Bonnie and this film that that I then is is what I used to watch constantly with with Lucas when he was a baby watching this film watching Meet the Robinsons watching mm. Tangled um so yeah straight away when I saw that I don't remember seeing it at the beginning of Meet the Robinsons the other week but no it, I don't it jumped out at me uh time. did they do something different they might have done something different I think they did something a little bit I can't remember <laughs> Just, I just thought I looked it up, but mind you, yeah, I think we would have noticed. I think we would because we. Do I'm sure I looked it up like though. Because, uh, yeah. There was also. Do, do you ever? Did you? Do you remember when? Or did you have Sky when the, when they would had the first got the Disney Cinema Channel, and they used to have their own Sky Disney ident that showed loads of different characters and it, uh, from Pixar and from the animated films and things. It was brilliant. I don't know. It was all like spot. You could spot all the different characters on it. It was great. Hmm. It's still not as good as. No, well, what is? And uh, well, but they, they, they later lose the word Walt during the Muppets film. I mean, just a little. That's nothing to do with story. Just wanted to. It's, it's, it's right <laughs> at the top of the film. It's, you know, it's worth yes. uh, n- n- noting, isn't it? Mm. So yeah. First impressions count. Well, indeed. But this story, I, I, I would like to go first, gentlemen, if I may, <laughs> ladies first. Um. I often, there's a theme between the three of us uh, that you guys sometimes, you clutch onto uh, an inconsistency or an implausibility in a story. Yeah. And then it ruins it for you. Mm -hmm. And I I do get quite irritable at you, don't I? I'm like, you're missing the magic. You're missing the magic. Yeah. But some of them. Someone did that on Twitter, actually. And uh, I kind of think, "Mm, I don't think you should hold the entire film against this. Well, I'm getting that. Now, there are some. (laughs) Um, things that of that nature that are so blatant and big, it's like original sin. And one of the few I would count in that category is Toy Story 4, where they just the very concept of this being initiated by Woody for the reasons it's initiated is mm-hmm. so alien, I can't accept the film. Now, in this instance, the lack of understanding of how the making TV works that's kind of shown in that opening sequence is so like just massive. I'm like, I can't really get past it. Now this thought jumped into my head and I thought, now hang on, Lucy, you're being hypocritical. You get cross about this. So I I continued to watch thinking if I accept that, if I accept that as okay, how is the rest of the film? Now, I will say from that point onwards, when I decided I was going to accept that nonsense, (laughs) um, I actually, I found the rest of the journey developed very nicely. The characters, the the way that the relationships developed were 
sometimes I just think people become friends too quickly or they fall out too quickly mm. or whatever. I thought these were re a really good trio of characters and it, all the developments worked. In that respect, I liked all of it. But like I say, in my opinion, th there's an original sin that is is very hard to jump over. Do you understand what I'm trying to get I, to? I'm, I'm have you, have, with have you, you. Have you said what the problem is? I just the the understanding of how TV programs are made in the opening sequence, um, like that boom went into shot, but you couldn't see the boom. Now, yes or no? In the next sequence, the show cameras behind boards and and things like this. But they don't take into consideration that you'd have to change location. You'd need multiple shots. But, you'd need. Yo, you see, you're going into big details like that. But, but what about the fact that that was all filmed, including lasers coming out of his eyes? And yes. yet it's plausible to him that, that yes. it's all real. It doesn't it doesn't compute at all. There's another little bit about this for me as well, which is this. Is this portraying real life in a cartoon or is it a cartoon? Because um there's there's a bit when all the when all the explosions and everything happen and there's one of those guys with the electric hands and all the vehicles are crashing out of the sky and landing everywhere and he's going like this. Yeah, yeah. Right. That bit is just entirely cartoony. There's nothing about it that that's that's plausible. You couldn't do that as a stunt. It just it it wouldn't work. You couldn't do it. So it's not real. And yet everything about what they're trying to do here is make it plausible that it's real and it's seen as real to bolt. Mm. Didn't didn't take away my enjoyment of the film particularly, but no, it did. That's... It just messed with my head. It just, the whole thing just made me go. Yeah. I, I, what what is going on here? And also, so you see the adoption bit at the beginning, mm -hmm. and and then it jumps to this thing where it's a TV show. That was the kid, all the kids' favorite bit was the, the start. Yeah, that's right, the, yeah. The, the bit that was nothing to do with the rest of the film. The last was all it. their favorite, which makes you think, oh, maybe they should have focused on that. <laughs> so so yes, but yeah, you're right. But it goes into this TV thing, and straight away you're like, hang on, is this a, is this an episode of a TV program, or is it a trailer for it because they're bringing us into it at the same time as showing an episode but it's got the whole origin story there in the first minute of it but it but it's then throwing us at the end of that episode into well this is already an established program which it can't be because we've literally just seen the how it all begins we've, we've seen all that because it's all part of the same story and that whole thing just messed with my head a little bit i i just accepted it because um I think you're supposed to just, I think the way, right, what what we're seeing is what's basically in his head. So I, I yeah. don't think we're exactly seeing like the process of the filmmaking and there could be stops and starts, mm -hmm. you know, where, where, yeah. where, where they trick him. I think it's, and also for us watching this, we it has to be shown to us like that. So I just accepted it. I just yeah. thought, yeah, if, if there are, Problems with with you know the, you know like it wouldn't be made like that or you know whatever I think well I, yeah you have to go with it for the sake of the story and I was happy to do that. Um, someone on Twitter did say um, he basically don't want to watch the film again because of the boom thing. Now um, I don't want to sort of ask people on Twitter what they think and then just let, like argue with them. Um, <laughs> if, if if that's what he he or she uh, I think it was he wants to do then fine but I just. He saw that boom thing as like being uh, too unrealistic and like it wouldn't work and he just wasn't on board. But I just thought that was just like maybe it just felt like the director was just making a point and saying, guys, we need to just watch out for this because, you know, if the illusion's broken, then it might ruin it for the dog and then the whole thing falls apart. And I just took it as that and I was like, all right, I, I can I can deal with that. I'm fine. I'm on board. Yeah. I mean, you have to sus suspend belief a bit and, you know. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. The, the, uh, here's the so, thing sorry, for me. Suspe suspend disbelief. Here's the thing for me, and and I will leave it after this point. And this isn't a criticism at all, but the first time I watched this, I was all for this Inspector Gadget TV series that was going on with a a dog not called Brain and a girl called Penny. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I I was all for it, and I thought, yes, this is good, and it got me right in. So I was actually quite disappointed when it didn't turn out to be that film, and it ended up being what essentially is very easy to get confused with a Pixar film. Um, because it, it kind of. It's, I think it a lot of the films in this era have that kind of feel where you, it changes it, tone completely, doesn't it? Absolutely, mm. completely. Yeah. And the first time I watched it, I thought I loved that. I thought I thought actually, you know, it it bought it it, it pulled me back round again. It, it did pull mm -hmm. me back round again. 
Um, I just wasn't so interested this time. I, I, I thought it was all it, right. I just want to make clear before I carry on talking that I, I agree with both of you in that one side made the conscious decision to accept what was working, I do think it was a strong story. Hmm. I had to decide to do that because honestly, that it wasn't going naturally. But if you do just accept it, all right, this is how they work, it's fine. Now, interesting you should say about um, it changing turn. What surprised me was how much genuine crisis was in this film. You know, like when he's hanging off the back of a lorry and he thinks, the problem with thinking that you're a superhero is that you think you're invincible yeah. and there's genuine danger in that. And I do think kids need to understand that as well. So when he's doing these things, you think you're, he's just going to jump off the back of there or he's just going to do this. He, he's going to knock himself out. And as a result, there was a lot of genuine crisis there, which I think is why... It, just from my own point of view, I was quite gripped by this story a lot more than I thought I would because there's not on the face of it, there's not much that appeals to me from my taste. Yeah. But it, it, it did grip me all the way through. I think that I thought... dawning realisation is great though as well. Like when he's bleeding and he's like, what's mm. this? <laughs> and, yeah. And as he starts to realise that, that the bolt on his side's like ink and he's looking at his paw and it's like... It, it, it's very nicely they, done. They, ne they never show blood, do they? And it's slow enough Which is, as well. what's this red stuff coming out of my paw and you never see it? It's it's slow enough. It, it also, the comparisons to Buzz Lightyear struck me as I was watching it. That mm, Finding out it's a toy. Real toy thing. Mm. But the difference with Buzz is one minute he thoroughly believed it, the next minute he found out and it was over. His arm came off. Even when... Um, he was getting it. He was getting more and more evidence, and people were telling him it wasn't a come to Jesus moment. It, it it genuinely took a bit of time to find out and accept what that meant and what the consequences were, what was real, because he still believed in Penny, and it would have been very easy for him to take the presumption that kids, uh, Mittens took, which is that she was acting too. Mm. So I, I found, it, it, you know what. An incredibly complex character development for that little mutt. I, what, what? Can we just go back a sec? Because mm -hmm. I found that whole intro just really exciting. You, the, the way the way the, 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 the film logo comes up, ident, title, whatever, you know, the dramatic music. Yeah. You know, it's like, do, 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 bolt. It was exciting. And then there's that big chase scene. And that chase scene had all sorts in it. It was like, it was action packed. It had humor in it. Big explosion goes off and it cuts the outskirts of the city and a little paper cup just goes. Yeah, funny. I love that. Yeah, funny, smart, nice, nice timing. Um, it had everything slow mo, you know, and then uh, bolts speak. It's dramatic. By that point, I was just like, yeah, man, yeah. But then it's not that film. No. But then, if it was just that all the way through, I'd have got tired of it. Um, so I, I like that it takes a turn and it turns into what is essentially like a. Like a buddy B movie. Buddy, yeah. Um, like, it was like a Bond trip. intro, wasn't it? It was like a Bond intro, that yeah. kind of thing. A bit Mission mm. Impossibly. Mm. 24, something like that. Im impossibly. Impossibly. <laughs> I <laughs> like... The first time we watched it, I totally fell for it. I didn't... I had no idea it was a TV show. No, same. But, and I was like, huh. All right. Interesting. You know? I liked the character of Rhino. I'm going to put that on the table right now because I know we always talk about characters in this section. Um, he was well observed. <laughs> Not that we all know uh, hamsters who talk like that, but I, I just no. thought he, he was a believable, well-rounded character and he was very funny. He had all the best lines. He had all the best gags. Yeah, because a lot of humour in some of these previous ones have not been like it's felt oh, very it's forced. It's been off the boil, hasn't it? Yeah, it exactly. really has, and it's like, like you, see, you said, Chris. Uh, I think last time it was someone sort of applying the humour afterwards, mm. like trying to pepper it on, and it wasn't working. Whereas this is just, it's naturally just, it's funny. The, the animations, yeah. the animators are doing a funny job. The script's funny enough. The timing, everything's working and, pretty and well. The little short as well that that Lucas talked about. He, mm -hmm. That is equally as funny. It's like they, they've just they've hit on something there with that character that, that yeah. really really works for me. I've not seen that for ages. No, I think we watched we watched that probably at the time Bonnie was into it, and we've never watched it since. Mm. But it's, she did like, uh, what's he called? Rhino. Rhino. 
I'm <laughs> just looking up um, because I should have written it down when I did my um, research, but I believe it was a member of the production team who voiced Rhino. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, uh, Mark Walton. Mm. Yeah, who is a Disney animator? Yeah, so I, I like that because a lot of the humour was from the delivery, but also from his little. And I had a sense of his ways of moving, his little dancers, and you always get a sense that they've used the visual references from recording. Well, if you've got an animator playing a part mm. in the office, as it were, I don't know if he animated his own part, that would have been a, a real treat, wouldn't it? Um, but they could just say, Mark, just do a little shimmy, let me see what it looks like. So I think yeah, that yeah. might have helped, helped towards it. I totally forgot that it was John Travolta until today. It, I haven't, he hasn't sounded that young in years either. I find, do you not <laughs> yeah. find that really strange? It was just, it, I, I, th I thought he acted it really well. I really well, did. I mean, I've previously known it was him because we watched mm. it a few times, but then it's, like, it's been a few years. And I was like, who is that? And then I thought, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't care. And then when I did happen to look it up as we're watching, I thought, do you know what? I would never have, I would never have picked up on that. I wouldn't have realised it just hearing his voice. It doesn't sound much like him, does it? No. It sounds like a younger version of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you like? Did you like the music, the pigeon music? Yeah. Oh man, that was so clever. The way they had three well, sets of three pigeons, and they all had similar dynamics, but mm -hmm. they were specific to their geography. Did you notice how you right. had the surfer dude, Californian? You had the the wise guy, New Yorkers. Yeah. This is what I was thinking of when we watched the wild and those pigeons appeared, and I thought hang on, is it going to be like that? And I couldn't think what film it was from, so I stopped myself mm. from talking about it. Yeah. And then this came and I was like, oh, it was this, and it was great. See, that's the difference. Why didn't this they was do so something well like that? written. Do you not feel like maybe they, that that these characters were supposed to be in that film and they started doing it and then went, yeah, we're not yeah. going to do that now because mm. their, their their role within it is quite similar, yeah. except mm. the other ones just disappear. Mm. Well, I, I like that it was different pigeons. Mm. It would have been very possible and lazy for them to just have the same pigeons sort of keep landing and interacting. But this difference and, and the way that could give them characters and the head movements and the... Animation. And, yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, we'll, we'll come um, on to that. <laughs> but the, just uh, the way that you can get a, a friendship dynamic like that with the mm. body language of pigeons. Brilliant. Really, really good. Yeah. What I was saying before about locations, like once it does get into uh, the, the road trip bit, it was just really nice to spend time there. Because, you know, you had a TV studio and then you had the city and I was like, oh, no, I'm not that interested in that. And then they're in this like nice field and they went to like a picnic campsite and it was really nice. And like the montage during the song where they're just traveling all across America and you see all these different places. So I wanted to see like loads more of that. It was really, really nice yeah. and nice to spend time there. So that's why I really appreciated that t tonal change because it just gave you a chance to see something, you know, visually really pleasing. Love a good and road trip movie for that very reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get to yeah. see lots of different places. Yeah. And then the ending, what did you think to the ending, guys? The big fire in the studio? I'm sorry, but I was absolutely fine with him legitimately saving Penny and it being a cliche. I was absolutely oh, fine yeah, with I was that. Fine but it was, that. though, yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. it, it what what else would it have been? That I think that's yeah. that's what I just kept thinking was, yeah, it's a it's a bit annoying this, but but honestly, what else would it have been? And it's mm. a, it's touching, and it's a love story in many ways, isn't it? I, you know, I like that Rhino holds up the the thing, and then and then Mittens comes and pulls him out, goes not on my watch, and like saves his life. There's a lovely little bit there. I think it's just just mm. nice. Mm. The fire safety officer at the studio needs to take a look at his job there. <laughs> you know, I'm fairly sure they have, they have setups for their naked flames in places mm -hmm. like that that don't leave the bankable star suspended from the ceiling during a fire. But, you know. I, I quite like at the end where, where they've changed they've, they've changed Penny as well. And it's someone else and, like, and she's like, I wonder if people mm. will recognise me. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I can see Ray Cromore. But Bonnie was watching that quite intently, and I thought, like, I don't think she understands what's happening. I think Bonnie just literally thought that they've had to change her appearance. Yeah. And I was going to say, oh, it's a different actor playing that part because she doesn't want to do it anymore. And I thought, mm. 
forget it, it's fine. It's hard <laughs> to, to explain concern the, with that. the Ant-Viv phenomenon, isn't it? Mm. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right, do you want to score this? Yeah. yeah. I keep doing Chris's job because I think we're still on the Disneyland Paris show. I'm it's sorry. all right. It's all right. This is a joint venture, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Nobody's in charge here. I just do the intro at the start. And I'm cool. going I'm going to go forth and be the first one to say do it. um I did I I am surprising myself with this because I thought that it was a strong and gripping star it despite some big problems in the opening and the ending. And so I am going to give it an 8. Mm. Well, I'm going to do you one better cuz I think it's funny, it's charming and it's exciting. I've got to give it a nine. Um, I was going to give it really low um, to start off with. And uh, honestly and truthfully, talking with you guys about it has actually knocked it up a couple of points. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it an eight. I'm going to give it an eight. I think it's worth it. I did not go into this thinking <laughs> I would be scoring like that or that you two would be either. But that's nice, no, isn't it? Uh, like, I, and, and I did think... As I've as I've written down things after we watched the film, my my gut instinct was, yeah, that whole intro thing spoilt it a bit for me. But Hugh, you've talked me around. You've talked me around and made me realise actually that there's a reason why I used to watch this film a lot. Because you love it. Yeah, because because I, I really <laughs> like it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Should we go on to animation then? Yeah. Get the animation you, the characterization you, and don't forget the background and the style. Yeah, man. Right. Hmm. I think they've uh, we've frozen on uh, your screen, Chris. Are we all right still? You are all right. Yes. Good. You're very good. <laughs> good. Um, they've made an effort to make these characters look different and interesting. I think it, it feels a bit more like Incredibles-y. Yes. In, like the design. Yeah. And it's no bad thing. Uh, you know, they're not like some of the characters are kind of kind of uh, unappealing, mm. but they're all different enough that like it works. Like the the agent, I, there's something about him. Like he looked very specific to the point where I just like thought he feels so specific. He like I, I don't know who he is, mm. like who he's supposed to be. But I, what I'm trying to say is I, I think it was good, varied character design. There was a bit, um, it must have been, oh, it, it, it was when they first came out of the trailer and the uh, the agent was there. And I just thought, these don't, they don't feel like characters from a, they don't feel like Disney characters. There's some, mm. There was something about the way they moved at times that just didn't quite work. And, and right at the end, I can't remember what scene it was, there was a, a bunch of guys in, in like, um, hazmat suits or something like that I can't remember and and they were running it must have been the fire it would have been the fire so they're running towards the fire but it, they were kind of making these running motions but they weren't at the right speed of a person running and they were just moving across the, the thing and it, it that that is literally I'm nitpicking here mm -hmm. it just felt like it wasn't quite there like like we're just about there now we're getting to that point of it is getting there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's huge improvements on what we've had in the last few films. I did notice doubt. the same thing with Penny as well. She was running without weight. Yeah. You know, there was right. no sense of sense of groundedness underneath the feet. But then but Bolt's we... movement mm. was great. Mm. So. Yeah. And as we said before, those pigeons are first class. Absolutely. Oh, the, yeah. the feathers, the sheen, the, the colour grading. The way they moved was just like, it was like a master class mm. in animation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's weird actually. That was so good that it kind of, kind of highlighted uh, weaker aspects of the animation, the the, the pigeons. Hmm. I think you see, it's. I don't think all the animals, going on from what you just said, matched each other in the way they chose to portray them. For example, the rhino moved ridiculously, unlike a hamster, mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Um, and I loved it. It's brilliant and great animation and really characterful. But then others were very anatomically realistic, like the pigeons were. So they didn't they didn't pick a line in that yeah. respect. If and you know and then I mean. then you've got human characters as well that that are kind of interacting with all of that. And and again, I, I just don't quite think they've got humans right. There's just there's, mm. yeah. But I've, again, again, nitpicking. I, I think really. Penny was quite unappealing. 
Yeah, but but she more didn't... appealing than than replacement Penny at the end. Yeah, yeah. but she just didn't. It, you could see in the way that they treated Bolt that they really they had to make you understand his emotions. Mm-hmm. You had to feel his journey. You had to just feel for him. Whereas with Penny, it didn't seem like they'd put a lot of effort into her, her facial ex- into her basically. Yeah, yeah. Not just the facial expressions, just everything. They didn't have somebody looking at a picture on a cork board going, "We need more. We, that that needs refining." Mm. She was just what she needed to be, which was you know a preteen girl. Boom, done. Here's a couple of bits I liked. Uh, the bit where Mittens is talking bolt through the begging face is good. Mm. You know, she's just sort of tweaking it. Yeah, she's like, left ear up, no, your other left, now both them down. And then it, a bit, I didn't know at the time, and then she's like, now look up, and then the face comes together, yeah, the little yeah. begging thing. Mm. <laughs> but it was really funny. Uh, and also, it's very small on screen when it happens, but just after Rhino helps uh, them get out of the truck, uh, helps Bolt get out, mm. and he, um, it's very small, so you can either see it, but then he says, uh, that, just that little dance to, there's no truck there I know that can keep him, Bolt and Rhino. And he does a little jig, and it's so good that you just know the animator has got some moves. <laughs> yeah. They've been in front of the mirror doing a little... Four or five months of hard work there in that yeah. 45 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even just the concept of having a hamster and a ball for like most of the time, it's mm. just really interesting, funny. Um, quick shout out to the end credits as well, because I really loved that. I yes, really they were the nice. I the thought they were great. Yeah. Mm. Um, that's all I've got to be honest I on think animation. We did. Um... Oh well, let's just let's just, can I just reiterate like the because it's in the correct section now. But the yeah. the location stuff, mm. you know, brilliant. Mm-hmm. That's where this really shines for me is uh, the, the landscapes that you've seen. You know, I I think it's because we've not been on holiday for a long time. <laughs> 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 oh, don't don't. So sick of Yorkshire. Um, yeah, I think we did. I think we inadvertently discussed a lot of it in the story, didn't we? So, um, yeah. Cool. Well, should we score it then? Yeah. Uh, I'll kick it off. Nice character design, some excellent movement, and some really nice locations. And for me, there's no denying that opening sequence. I just think it's action packed and fun and exciting. I've given it an eight. Oh. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it's great. I. I, uh, it's not quite there. That's the only thing for me is that it's not quite what where mm. we know it's going to be. Um, but you can see some real development. It's really they've really moved forward. And as I said right at the start, it's difficult not to um, to have some appreciation for the amount of effort that goes into doing what they're doing. And uh, yeah, as as you said, Hugh, the the different settings are just are great, and the pigeons are amazing. I'm going to give it an eight. Oh, I guess seven. Did you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, changed, I changed it from a seven to an eight, actually. So you would have been right otherwise. There were some individual, um, really, really good elements, um, but I didn't feel there was a consistency across everything. But most of all, I didn't feel like there was a look. I don't feel like you could look at a single frame of, unless it had a character in it, mm. a single frame of the film and go, yeah, that's from Bolt, and no. Um, would you think it was a Dennis Hopper? Perhaps you Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper. Not Dennis Hopper. <laughs> Not Dennis Hopper. <laughs> Although he, he does road trips, easy riding. Uh, yeah. Edward Hopper. Does he paint? <laughs> Edward Hopper. He might do. Who knows? Um, and um, my benchmark is always, would I have a still of this on my wall? And no. I don't mm. think there's any point where I'd have a still. Definitely oh, not I the would. pigeons. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a seven. Very good. I've seen some of the pictures from the art of Bolt and, and some of the concept art and stuff looks really good, actually, but um, the cost of the book is ridiculous, so I shall be purchasing <laughs> it. <laughs> Music? The book, The Art of Bolt. There's one for pretty much every Disney film, just well, not yeah. a big chunk of, of the films that we've just gone through, but yeah. pretty much everywhere else there are. Yeah. Music? Music. Now, just so that you know, uh, your cameras might have stopped working, for, so you can't see what I'm doing or anything. Is it okay again now? Has it stopped freezing? It's fine. It's fine. Right. It's, been but it's fine. Strange latency on me. 
<laughs> so, mm. so that could be quite interesting for anybody watching right now. Um, music. But if you're listening, then uh, the matter. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> although, although Lucy's iPad keeps pinging. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry about that. That's all right. It'll be fine. Um, music. Uh, for me, it's entirely unmemorable. Um, I mm-hmm. think it does its job. It's fine. I didn't particularly like the songs. Um, I don't really have much else to say about it, really. I thought the score itself is great. Like the, the, it the, the opening, the, the opening score. I can't remember the exact tune now, so you know maybe that's like I'm contradicting myself because I can't remember it. But you know, it's kind of like do 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 do, and you know, it really gets you going. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's all about. But then that settles back into the distance. You know, just just like you say, it just does its job. But then it's all about that Jenny Lewis song, isn't it? Barking at the moon. Mm-hmm. Well, it's weird. It's called that. You, you think it was called like something about home but you know it's called back it's called barking at the moon i hate it when they do that it's like just in fact at the end you know that song uh, the duet um i thought i lost you i thought uh, they're repeating that so much i bet it's not even called that i bet they've done that thing you know i bet it's called i found you <laughs> yeah. but no it is it's, it's ironic it's, it's literally <laughs> called i thought i lost you but yeah back at the moon um i do like barking at the moon song and again i think it's that sentimental aspect of just watching it with bonnie when she was two uh, so I still like that song. It fits well with the point in the film, but it does kind of like if you if you take it out, it's like you know. Would you listen to it in the car, Hugh? It, it doesn't seem to belong. I would on a drive. Hmm. I don't drive, but I, <laughs> if we if we were on a drive on the drive, and it was a sunny afternoon, you know, it would feel appropriate. Hmm. I'd skip it. I think I'd skip all the songs of, of this. I. I quite like, this is one of those guilty pleasure things, um, never never say so on a first date, but I quite like this kind of soft pop country style, mm. to be honest. I it, can do, it yeah. It appeals to me. It's just easy to Sometimes. listen to. You bob along to it, and like Hugh says, long drive, It's it suits me. So I like the songs. Now, having said that, does it compare to the soundtrack of The Little Mermaid? Heck no. Does it even compare to um, Tarzan, you know, when he was trying to go the soft rock route? Brother Bear. Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just, it's it's not iconic. It never will be. Was it trying to be? I don't think it was. The scar served the purpose, which actually was quite epic. So well done for serving yeah. the purpose. It's what I would call just, it's your spaghetti carbonara. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It does the job. It fills you up, tastes yeah. good, it does the job. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's, Nothing more. I'm I think just... the duet. I think the duet in the end credits is is really catchy. Yeah, it's not it's not exactly to my tastes. You know, it's a bit like you know, it is a bit poppy. Yeah. But uh, in the moment, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely yeah. fine. I've nothing negative to say about <laughs> it at all. Like I say, it's it's not Little Mermaid, mm. but I've nothing negative to say about it. I think I'm just I'm yearning for like it's just been too long now, hasn't it? We, we've we've had a long period of this. It it was exactly the same in the last dark period as well. We went from having uh, film after film with with memorable songs with the Sherman Brothers doing stuff, and then suddenly we had nothing for ages. And then Little Mermaid came along, and yeah, now it's about to happen in again. In two weeks' time, we're, we're we're back into it, and and yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Just a frog, it. a little frog. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the history song from from the show will have some meaning in two weeks' time. I can't wait yeah. for that. Mm-hmm. I've had it on on in the in the uh, kitchen this week. Listening, to I always it. suspected uh, that Frog. that's uh, j- jingle you did was from Princess and Frog, but because I'm not that familiar with it, it took me weeks to nail it down. Like I thought, it must be that. I, I, I never bothered to look it up. I just thought, is it that? I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, my, Interesting little factoid. My brother and um, his girlfriend uh, have got a little musical duo and they, well... You've said little twice now in a very patronising way. No! Oh. <laughs> little, little musical. And he's, he's putting on no. a, a little concert as as in, you can watch. There's little, little as in two of them. Yeah. They've got a musical duo. And before the pandemic, they were in the bars on ferries. And they, they kind of had a contract coming up to do cruise ships um, and they, were, they had an agent who dealt with that. And one mm. of the cruise ships that they were 
the agent was saying, let me send some tapes off. I was a Disney cruise ship. So he said, can you do some, um, I'm easy listening. That's what it is. You know, when there's just a, a duo in the back of a restaurant, Yeah. Mm -hmm. can you do some, some easy listening a style of your choice, Disney music. So it was kind of the brief was take some Disney music and just turn it into some soft pop. And, uh, they, they did a, uh, they sent me a demo that they did of one of the I'm losing I'm very tired today I'm sorry the, of one of the um Princess and the Frog ones so I might send you it so we can play them oh, a little yeah. snippet next week yeah that's very good should we score this then let's let's uh six from me there you go mm, quite low there but well, I I just think that's your your carbonara score to be honest so I'm gonna join you Chris six all the way seven from me I think, I think those two songs are just good enough and the intro is just exciting enough <clears throat> to make it like... Oh, you hmm. might be right. right. Six is a mean one because I liked it. What are you saying? Seven. 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 <laughs> Excellent. Tell us IMDB then, Lucy, while, while Hugh talks about Ooh, yeah. I've added them up. I've added them up. There, was, right. <laughs> there weren't figures on the pages that I was looking at for the box office, but it did say it made a marginal profit, but it was credited with funding the Disney money. revival. Little bit of money. Marginal profit. People on IMDb didn't like it. 6.8, which is low for IMDb. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't holding out much hope for Rotten Tomatoes. However, the critics gave it 89. Now that is Whoa. high. That is I know high. that's really generous. Um, and the audience went right for that middle road with 74%, which is, that's a, that's a regular score. Hmm. That's what most things would get is 74. But 89 from critics. Very there good. Well go. done, Bolt. Pat on the head. Good boy. Go and have a treat. 74, you say? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Bonnie and Lucas both gave it three. Um, Ollie gave it seven out of one. I know, um, seven out of one. Uh, altogether, <laughs> we've given it 74. The aforementioned 74, that, wow. which is the same as uh, The Emperor's New Groove. It's oh. one below Sleeping Beauty. What else we got here? <laughs> I'm sorry about I'm so We should go back and do that. I must have been in a bad mood. For what? I slammed Sleeping Beauty. You at the did. Time. I don't know what you were, came you were over brutal me. Brutal about the artwork. I think that's about about. Bored and I'm about, boring. One more, one more than one more than Song of the South. One less than Sleeping Beauty mm -hmm. is Bolt. I there think that's go. a very good score for this. And I think people listening who haven't seen it, um, you know, seventy four. It's like saying. It's worth a watch. You might just really like this. You might yeah. think it's average. You might not even like it. I'm just, you know, you know, I'm just, I'm covering all bases here, right now. You are a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you might well, like it. You might not. You might hate it. You might love it. I mean, the thing Cute. is, it's the same star as Emperor's New Groove, and that is one of my favorite Disney films. But I do realize it's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, you yeah. know, it's just I wouldn't give it ten out of ten. I just really enjoy it's it. All right, yeah, it's fun. Isn't I it? just really like it. I don't really like Bolt, but I recognise that it's pretty good. Yeah. It's enjoyable, man. Yeah. It's enjoyable. Hugh, what about the Boohoo bonus? Well, Chris, before <laughs> we do that... <laughs> I'm pressing now. Really so there is no before. I don't know why. You're going to have to do favourites now, aren't you? <laughs> Hugh's Cry Factor. Oh, no, I've got to do it. Hugh's Cry Factor. Or not. <laughs> go on then, do no, favourite uh, bit first. Go on. Yeah, let's, 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 let's have some quick favourite bits. I've got a couple. Have you got any? Um. Well, anything with Rhino in it, I... Thoroughly, mm. thoroughly enjoyed. Um, I liked uh, the bit. <laughs> I liked the bit when the guy in the opening threw the threw the uh, bomb up and it hit the helicopter and exploded, and then he went <laughs> and electrocuted himself. I really quite enjoyed that. <laughs> There's a bit where um, Lewis the pigeon tries to sneak a stone past mittens. Like all all the other pigeons are coming up and like bringing her like you know like protection money. You know, like, because uh, we've been watching Sopranos and um, Better Call Saul, you know, there's, there's always a bit where someone's like, hey, sorry, I'm a little short this week. And they're like, why are you short? And then they beat the, you know, seven bells out of them. Um, but there's a bit where this pigeon, two pigeons come up and they, they bring Mitten something. And this third pigeon comes on and he just, is, has he got a stone or something? And he just kind of like, he just pops it down and he tries to walk off all that like, casual. And he just, I just thought it was really funny, like how he, he tried to sneak it past and it was like, 
And then he, then he's like, <laughs> then he's just off. He's made me laugh. Yeah. But the, w- one other bit was, um, I like it when Rhino says, um, he goes, oh, I'll get a ladder. <laughs> and, you, yeah. and, and he trundles off and he's bawling. You're thinking, well, that's funny because he can't get a ladder. He's just a little hamster. But then he does. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good enough for me. That, that was funny enough. I thought, oh, that's funny. But then you get the extra, like, topper. <laughs> Later yeah, on, he's yeah. like wheeling, and, and how they've worked out how he does it is he just gets in like in between two of the rungs and he just, you know, rolls forward with his ball and that's how he moves the ladder. Brilliant. There you go. Any favourite bits? Uh, like Chris said, anything with Rhino, but specifically Rhino's little dance. Yeah. yeah. What does he say? There's no truck that I know that can keep in Bolton Rhino. <laughs> right, cry factor. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Uh, there's, there's, you know, some sentimental moments peppered throughout. You've got like when Mittens realise Bolt's come back for her, you're like, oh, that's nice. Uh, but the Barking at the Moon road trip montage, you know, it's nice. Um, but then when he, uh, come on, when he does the super bark at the end, you know, and it shows, it repeats those shots of his, 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 his hind leg going down, his, you know, steady himself with the front leg, you know, I was, <laughs> I was all into that. Four. Whoa. Four good ones, eh, you? Well, that first one I hit the, the I actually hit my jaw button. I don't know <laughs> if, it, if, if it sounded different. I think that's, that's a, a very generous four for that. It, Did it really get you? Yeah, I was. I does have the feels. I, I thought, I think it's quite a, yeah, I get that. The thing is about like the cry factor is it's, it's sometimes it's about, uh, I can just be excited to the point of like tears. There's also, if, if, it's okay. got, if it's got sentimental memories for you anyway, Hugh, then you're already invested, aren't you, before yeah. you start? Yeah, and it was early. Yeah. It was early in the morning as well. That's never a good start. <laughs> you know, I'm like... <laughs> you should see him with a hangover. He can't even watch Sainsbury's adverts when he's got a hangover. <laughs> Here we are. Well, uh, what are we doing next then? Oh, we've just talked about that, haven't we, a little bit? But Princess yeah. and it, the Frog. Princess and the Frog. So I'm the really is, looking forward yeah. to this one. I am. I am. Very much looking forward to it. And then it's been a while since I watched then, it. Yeah. Well. We've um, kind of built up to getting better from the wild, which is like, you know, the bottom. You know, like just building up, getting better and better and better, and now it's just going to go. Pew. But then there's Winnie the Pooh in amongst it all. Oh god! No, when is that? <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. When is that? After that... Tangled, I think. Tangled's okay. fifty. I think it's fifty-one. You had a bigger reaction to that than when I told you when you found out our Disney World holiday was cancelled. <laughs> Honestly, it's because I was expecting that, but I keep forgetting about Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> like, I, I just, I think because, like I said this before, because we've done a Winnie the Pooh, I think maybe we should, maybe I can't, I can't imagine us doing like an hour-long episode on it. Maybe we should split it with something else. Talk about Mandalorian or something. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, possibly. I'll, I'll just do two short episodes that week and they can have a, a bonus. Can we do Unless... that with Ralph Breaks the Internet as well? Oh, what? <laughs> I can't wait. To, I can't. Do you know what? The, the, these ones coming up, these later ones, I have so much to say about them compared to the others because mm. I, I think the, this, um, the way they're made, the way they're written starts to get very wonky and things don't feel right. They don't hang together as they should. So I've got so much to say about these films coming up. Mm. Very good. That that's mm. good. It bodes well that you have things to say. Oh, that's good. I'm going to be angry. As uh, Pete Warner from uh, the Diz says, the Diz YouTube channel. There, uh, what does he say? Daddy's back and he's in a mood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the Diz. Daddy's back. He's in a mood. <laughs> then, he, then, then he berates the audience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch it sometime, Chris. It's funny. I will. I just watch it because he's like he's he's cantankerous, but he's funny. Trademark funny. rant. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds like my kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, um, that I guess that just about wraps it up, doesn't it, for this time? Oh, so, ooh. We we, did, we we talked about Twitter, didn't we? The the comments on Twitter. Yes, you did. Yeah. It was that one guy, but I think there was another one. And let me just double check. Okay. No, nope, just the one. Forget it. You t- you talked in line about it. I did. I did. That never happens. I should do that no, more often. No. Well, that just worked, didn't it? It worked nicely. Nobody's mm. um, pointed out any of the characters, by the way. Yeah. No, if you can name every character on screen, uh, 
respect if, points because it's quite easy. Yeah. If you're listening to us as was the original format, then we are we're sitting amongst some uh, some tweets. We should tweet it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anywho, right. Let's wrap up, shall we? Because we're getting close to that point where the unicorn comes out. So well, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can find us on Twitter and on Facebook and on Instagram and we also have a Patreon and they're all 37 Disney Street, believe it or not. We also have a YouTube channel with all sorts of stuff on it, which you might be watching this very second, um, but if you're listening, you won't be. So uh, come and check us out on YouTube as well. There's loads of great stuff on there. Lucy, yeah. as Lucy has just started uh, a, an outside venture. She's moonlighting, doing some DVC podcasting as well, aren't you? Brit's Guide to DVC, or if you're trying to find us on social media, media it's BG2DVC. Um, but yeah, the first podcast should be released on May the 4th, which is easy to remember because May the 4th be with you. It's the day after Luca's birthday. Oh, I bet you were gutted about that. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd well, be crossing my legs if I was Lara. I'm like, no, I want a Star Wars baby. No, I, I'm sure I've said this before, but but the name George was in contention for quite a long time. We liked <sighs> Lucas as a middle name, and we ended up calling him Lucas and dropping the George. Oliver has the George now. Oh, okay. um, but he could have been called George Lucas George Fletcher. Lucas Fletcher could have been on born a day later. So that would have been a bit much, though, wouldn't it? Chris, um, <laughs> we would have questioned your conception schedule. <laughs> you know what we're saying about the uh, people naming these characters that they could see on screen? Mm. Uh, I forgot um, one of the comments on the first appearance of these on Meet the Robinsons was, was from Hannah Marie, oh, a yeah. reg- regular commenter. And she said, like, um, lovely to get some uh, background on you guys. But she was actually talking oh, about yeah. our backstory, which... Yes. Uh, Mercedes asked us some questions and we answered them. So I thought I, it just tickled me that you were yes, like, oh, yeah. Right. Um, and you know, when <laughs> I was like, I was like, no, I think she's literally talking about the. Uh, yeah, I'd forgotten what we talked about, to be honest. What a with funny you. misunderstanding. Know who this guy is. <laughs> Most people know who that is. Mon- monkey Mouse. <laughs> monkey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> His original name. My favourites are below me and yeah. above me there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There we are. Anyway, should we should we call this a day? Great radio, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I cut this bit out of the radio, but no, I'm not. Oh, because no. spoiler, Maybe. wouldn't it? Right, good. Um, this is kind of dwindling now, isn't it? So let's clear off. Yeah. Um, it's been emotional, guys. Uh, we'll speak to you in two weeks' time. See you later. Bye. Bye, pals. Where's he gone?